All right. Hey everybody. This is Jesse here. Um, I thought I was probably due for another bead and chat video here on uh, YouTube. Um, I noticed that I had a big jump in views on a few of my videos. Um, over the past couple of weeks, I've got one video with over 400 views, and it's an hour-long beaded embroidery video that doesn't even have sound, and so I'm not sure the cause for that uptick, but thank you for watching. Um, yeah, it, it blew my mind, really. So, thank you. Uh, thanks to all the new subscribers. Um, if you're out there and you subscribe, that's... Oh my gosh, it's the number one thing to help this channel grow. So, thank you so much. Um, so, I thought I'd put another video up. Just kind of see what's going on. You know, a bit of a catch-up. Here, I'm... Uh, gonna make a pair of dentilium fringe earrings. I'm gonna have these little uh, abalone shell beads as the base, kind of at the top. And so they're just simple and quick, but people like them. Uh, they've been selling pretty well in my Etsy shop. That's of course um Choctaw Clover on Etsy, if anybody is interested. Um, so, see I threaded through and I left a tail here and this tail will be woven in at the end. And then I just put four beads on at the top to make a loop. That's where the uh, earring hooks will go in. So then I'm going to set this down, and I just follow a simple pattern. Um, I think I'm going to make these a little on the longer side when I start. Um, I'll start with nine on the top, or nine for the first fringe. And then I go down and they'll be about five inches long at the end. Oh, I also need uh, some fire polish beads to put at the base of the dentillium shells. So there's one, two, three, five, and six. And they're just four millimeter uh, round faceted check glass fire polish beads. I buy them from shipwreck beads, usually. So we've got nine. And do six. Ah, for the mix there. Sorry if it's hard to see. One of my lights, the uh, the bulb went out and I haven't gotten um, around to the store to get a new bulb. And so for here I'm going to put 11. So that was, I did 9 with these like cream color beads and I'll do 11 and then I'll do the 6 of the mix and then I'll do 13 here. So it's an increase of 2 for each color. And then you start this one off with the uh, the next color, so then it ends with the last one. This will be 13. Yeah, I don't know, it was just weird all of a sudden. 
all those views. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda sort these centillium shells a little bit by size, so just so I use the longest ones first. But they don't have to be like exact. I just for each want to use the longest one first. And let's make sure that this is clear. I filed them beforehand, but I forgot to check to make sure that they were clear. So the ends are even. And uh, remember when you're dealing with Intilium, any shell, and you're sanding it or filing it, um, you want to do it in water because you don't want to breathe in that dust. Okay? Or get it in your eyes. That's the big thing. You don't want to get it in your eyes. So be safe and smart. So put that last seed bead on at the end, and then I skip over it and I come up do everything. And this is how you do fringe. You want to make sure you don't go through your thread as you're bringing your needle back up. So, those are also get like a snag. And then here. Hopefully you can see it. Come up through these last ones. And then through the first two on the top. I pull my thread through. The first one is always the hardest one when you're making earrings like this. So. And pull it through, make sure that you get all the thread up so you don't have any like loops hanging out along your fringe. And then you go back down. Here, make sure your thread is clear of your fringe. And so for these, I started with the longest um, leg of the fringe. And that's why I started with nine here. And so I'm going to decrease by two for this one. So and then I'm doing three on each one, so it'll be um, nine, seven, and five. Since that's seven, I increase by two as I go down, so this will be nine. Our next, oh, looks like this one is blocked. 
So I take a sturdier needle than the one that I'm using for the beadwork. So this is a like a number 10 sharp. And we'll see if I can clear the shell with this. It's usually just like a little rock or something. Yeah. So I totally broke the top of that, and so I'm gonna go, I use a glass nail file, and and I just dropped the dentilium onto the floor. Sorry for my extremely squeaky, old, very old um, office chair that I use. It's just my favorite. It's a really comfortable chair. It's one that um, my dad pulled out of a dumpster at his work like 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. And uh... I just love it and all. Like, no other office chairs compare, you know? So. Oh. People driving all crazy. I don't know if you guys could hear that or not. But. Okay, so. I want to hate it when this happens, like when your needle goes fine through the first time and then the second time like it snags on something. Come on. There we go. Just got to kind of maneuver it around a little bit. That's the thing is when you're working with natural materials, each piece is different, you know. Did I? Oh, I am just all over the place tonight. See, I think I split my thread there. Did I? Let's see. We'll see. This whole thing may just be a giant fail. <laughs> Have days like that, you know? Okay. So, I'm gonna get this other tail out of the way. I'm gonna pull this up. Take care of that loop. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> okay. Here we go. When you come out, you want to make sure you avoid those, your other two fringe. The thread's getting caught. <laughs> Pliers over here. Where are we? Okay. And let's do this last one. So again, we have nine, seven, so this one starts with five. And then... Ah. And 
so the purple is seven. Now we do our six. Six, yeah. Sometimes you just gotta double check. And then this one's mine. Okay. So we have our shortest dentillion for this side. The needle went straight in. You grab your fire polish bead. Another seed bead. Let's see. Oh, there we go. First try. Clear. And then to get rid of your excess here, make sure you hold on to both. See, I, I pull the thread with these back fingers. I hold the top firm here with this finger. And then I hold the last bead between these two fingers on the other hand. You have your fringe. So what I'm gonna do is go around this top loop here a couple of times. And then I'm going to go back down through the abalone bead and I'm going to go back down through the longest fringe, the first one. With this tail um, and just weave it through down to the bottom and back up, and then that's enough um, to hold it in place. The tension on the thread throughout the whole thing is what keeps it together, and really that's all you have to do. Um, you know, there's no knot or anything, it just, it holds itself together. And I've never had a piece come apart um, that I know of. No one's ever like reached out to me through Etsy or Instagram to say like, oh, my, my earrings fell apart or anything. So, and I wear earrings that I've made pretty much every day and none of my own have ever come apart. There may be problems with, um, you know, findings like the hooks or, or something, and that's kind of beyond your control, but none of the beadwork has ever come undone. So. 
But always, if you buy something from my shop and you do have a problem with it, please reach out to me and I will do everything I can to make it right. So. Uh, that's what I'm here for. We want to make a quality product that I stand behind. So. There's a squeaky old chair. I pull that thread tight, use my threads up, so that's one end of the thread taken care of, and then I come back to this, this is the one that we left out when we started. thread my needle again. That is not the right end. Ah. There we go. And so this one I take and I weave back into the last fringe, which is the shortest one. one's a little persnickety. Well, we got it. Just come up and then go right back down. Oh, and it goes right out. No problem. I call that good. And thread zap it. I'm gonna put these on these like brass hooks here. Kind of like a bronzy color. Let me just take your pliers. Pull that little part of the loop out. Let's see, you have your that top loop that you made with the four beads. hang it on there and close that loop back up. And there's your earring. So you've got abalone, these are Japanese size 11 seed beads, and dentilium shells. So you've got kind of that west coast vibe with your abalone and your dentilium. There you go. And then I'll make the other one. I don't know if I'll record it or not. Um, you know, I'm sorry about the angles and stuff on here sometimes. Um, I just, I'm recording off of my old, well, it's my phone. It's an iPhone 7, but it's, you know, coming up on five years old. And I don't know how to edit anything. <laughs> so um, what I shoot, I just put up. It's all 
just kind of raw footage. Um, hopefully you can take something away from this. Uh, you know, new technique or something, some new tip or trick. Or maybe you just enjoy watching beadwork being done. So hopefully it's okay. Um, but again, sorry if I'm out of, out of frame or stuff is wobbly or the sound is bad. It's just, it is what it is. Um, and these are the beads that I used. They're from the Garden of Beaden in Garberville, California. So that's the color if you're interested. I don't have names, I just have like numbers. That's a great store, um, the Garden of Beaton. I love the name. Um, it's great to stop in if you're in the neighborhood, or um, they sell on Etsy, I believe. So, and of course, you can always find me, Chalk Talk Clover, on Etsy, and on Instagram, and here on YouTube. So. If you like what you see, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe, that would be huge. If you would subscribe. Um, and then just uh, keep watching. Thank you. Okay. See you guys later. Bye.